So the turnaround for both of these teams, because we're playing a day earlier, two games will be today. Oregon, Oklahoma State coming up after we're done here. It's quicker, you gotta get back in it. Is it good for Katherine Sandercock? Do you wanna get back out there after an emotional performance like that? Yes, and I would always remember watching the games on Thursday being like, man, I wanna be playing in those. You gotta wait a whole other day. So I think there is something. Yeah, the turnaround may be quicker, but it does not take away from the adrenaline rush and knowing that, hey, we get to play a day earlier, everyone's watching us. Kind of gives you those good game day feels kicking off the Super Regionals being the first team to play. 1-1 count to Dallas Goodnight, the transfer from Alabama. Going for the bunt. Kaylee Harding crashing in on it, and Dallas Goodnight is going to use that speed to beat it out. We talk about the home runs, and then they start with the bunt. Well, and that's what it's all about. This is what this series can bring to the table. And that's one thing you can say about Georgia. They have the pop in the bat, but Dallas Goodnight in that leadoff spot. Spunky, stolen bases, leads them off with that base hit. And Kat Sandercock, she is someone that obviously the softball world knows well. And she's developed that change, has that rise, has a little bit of a curve, but more importantly, that, that drop ball is her bread and butter. She throws that pitch in and out with consistency, can throw it at any count. Lindy Ray Davis, the catcher. She was moved up into the two spot for the NCAA tournament. Last 10 games hitting 222 with a home run and five RBI. And now she has Dallas Goodnight at first. Davis got a bunch of experience last year as the main catcher and now continuing that role in her sophomore season. first inning is always kind of the pressure cooker inning because you're trying to contain the emotions of what it feels like playing in a game like this like there's a lot on the line everyone knows what's at stake obviously winning game one but your heart pumps a little quicker in these types of moments and then after that first inning you start to kind of figure it out a little bit but the game day first inning jitters are real and almost the best parts of the game like those little emotions are things you look at down the line that you're like man i i love those feelings that's what makes this game so special those pressure filled moments yeah, that's why you pick your school that you go to you yep. want to get here you want that feeling yep. the crowd starting the k-time chant davis is going to call time here And Edenfield behind the dish has thrown three out of 29 base stealers for 10%. Obviously, with Dallas Goodnight, 21 stolen bases at first. And there goes Goodnight trying to pick her off at second. Plenty of time. That's now her 22nd. The 52nd stolen base for Georgia. This Florida State team, by the way. Over 100 stolen bases on the year. 123. So it'll be a 2 2 count to Lindy Ray Davis. Pops up into the infield. Josie Muffley calling everybody off. We talk about this Florida State defense, and they were so obviously critical in Katherine Sandercock's perfect game. I don't think a ball left the infield, but to trust the yeah. defense behind you. It makes you that much better as a pitcher. And I think even when you heard the post-game press conference with Josie Muffley in the fifth, she's like, man, I didn't, even, I didn't even realize she's out there throwing a perfect game, which I think when you take that piece away from it, it you don't play tight. I think at times when you know your pitcher's throwing a perfect game, you may try to play defense a little bit different. Here's Jada Kearney. This becomes a pressure-packed part of the lineup for Georgia. Jada Kearney with 19 home runs. Sarah Mosley with 17. Kuma with 11. Chambly with 12. Yeah, that's murderer's row. It's a cool 59 homers. <laughs>
Kearney coming in on a five game hit streak, hitting 357 during that time. She is the home run leader on this Georgia Bulldogs team, also the walks leader. Sandra Cox going to get that call. And Sandra Cox doing a really good job of nibbling those corners, Courtney, and that's really what it comes down to. When you're facing an offense like Georgia who doesn't strike out often, it comes down to the location piece and hitting great spots. I think the one thing for Georgia coming into this series, especially against Sander Cock, it's like, you know she has that drop ball. So these hitters have to find a way to get her to bring that ball up in the zone a little bit. Good take by Kearney last pitch. Kearney full swing and Catherine Sander Cock recording her first strikeout. It's all about the location. Look at the spot on the outside corner. Look at that pretty downward spin. That is a very tough pitch to hit. You put a little pressure out there for Catherine Sandercock with Dallas Goodnight with the leadoff bunt and the stolen base, and she's almost pitching better with that pressure. It doesn't come get any easier, though. Sarah Mosley now also on a five-game hit streak. 17 home runs. Their RBI leader with 52. Dallas Goodnight laid down a bunt to start this game, then stole the base. That's how she got into scoring position. And gets away from Edenfield and Goodnight to third. Just the little pieces of the game, right? Like Kat Sandercock could get frustrated that Michaela Edenfield misses that, but she connects with her briefly at home play, gives her a high five, makes eye contact. Like, those are just big moments to be able to pick her up right there as a senior in the circle. And those two have such a great relationship. Yeah. Great chemistry. 1-1 one, one to Mosley. Rolls it to Harding. And just in time, Bethany King taps on first. George is going to leave a runner. On you know, we got the chance to meet with Madison Kerpix and a few of the Georgia players today. And she told us, look, I am super excited yeah. to be here, to have this opportunity for my team. They come in with the momentum after their regional performance. And someone that grew up wanting to be a Georgia Bulldog. Right. Like I think that's such a full circle thing when you sit down and you talk with these young ladies and they talk about going to Georgia Bulldog camps growing up and it's always what they want to do. And then they get to wear this uniform and pitch in one of the biggest games of their lives. Like that's what it's all about, right? And I think that's what makes it so special. Mudge getting a piece of it. There's some room for Kaylee Mudge. She's on with a single. A majority of Kaylee Mudge's hits are to the left side. She does such a good job at staying on this pitch, hitting it the other way. She's so confident with that. Barrel stays right through it. Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a bleeder, but it finds green, and your leadoff's on. Janai Kerr, uh, Lonnie Alamina told us when Mudge is in a happy place, when she's giving on, yeah. when she's having good ABs, that frees up the rest of this lineup. Yeah. And there is, there's something about your leadoff going up and have a good gritty AB that just pumps confidence into the rest of the team, knowing that she's seen it well. Janai Kerr up now, get this streak, the last 20 games for Kerr, 
She's hitting 437 the last 20 games. Yeah, she's been a pretty solid two hitter for Florida State. She can drop that bunt. She keeps the defense honest. Sarah Mosley, Jaden Fields way up the line. And something I think that impressed me the most looking back at last weekend about Kerr was that she was struggling a little bit with the pitch on the outer half, right? Yeah. But she was able to step up in certain situations and lay down that bunt and get stuff going and not being defeated by maybe a bad at bat. And that's something Lonnie said that's the biggest difference for this young lady this year. She's able to turn maybe not great ABs into something positive. She's able to make that adjustment. And I think that impressed me the most about watching her Sunday was just, hey, all right, hey, I may not be feeling it on the outer half, but I can drop that bun. I can try to create havoc on the base pass. Three balls and a strike to Kerr. There goes Mudge. And they got her. Ellie Armistad applying the tag, the throw from Lindy Ray Davis behind the plate. What a throw by Davis, absolutely on the money. Love the pick by Armistead. Listen, Davis behind the dish. I mean, she's thrown out 32% of the runners, and they, I mean, it's a thing of beauty when it all works out together. Locked in. Now a full count to Kerr. Strikes her out. And I think Kerr was thinking something on the outer half, and she just gets frozen by this pitch. Love the location. And Madison Kerpix, she mixes the ball around the zone well. She's not going to blow you away with velocity, but she has enough stuff to really get your mind going as a hitter. Has an elite level changeup. She mixes that rise ball. We'll throw a little bit of a screw. There's that change up and when I look at this series offensively for both these teams, this to me is the difference maker for these pitchers. It's can they change speeds? Can they command that pitch? Especially that second, third time through the lineup. It's going to be so important because both these teams can adjust. They make adjust adjustments AB to AB. This is Kaylee Harding who pops up. No chance for the play. And talking about Florida State's offense, I mean, obviously we saw what their pitching staff can do. I think yeah. a question coming into this super is, how's the offense going to fare? Because Sunday, two games against South Carolina, they scored one run. Yeah. That's the beauty of the postseason, though. Yeah. Every single game is another opportunity to get something going. And you could say the same about Georgia. I mean, they scored three runs in three games leading up to their regional. And you look at what they did. And I think it just really comes down to sometimes just a, something great happening, whether it's maybe someone uncharacteristically who's struggling, gets a big base hit, and that just gets everyone going. Um, but yeah, to me on Sunday, Florida State struggled a little bit offensively, but they found a way to win, yeah. and Sander Cox stepped up. 1-2 two to Kaylee Harding. 2-2. Two, two. And sometimes that's what it takes. It takes your, your fifth year senior to go out there and throw an absolute gem and say, hey, you just need to give me one. Would I love six? Yes. But if you <laughs> just want to give me one, I got this in the bag.
Another thing I just I feel like I really dig about Georgia's pitching staff is just Madison Kerpix and Shelby Walters are like polar opposites. They're polar opposites in their demeanor and how they are out there. Madison Kerpix is just very chill, like not too high, not too low, kind of keeps those same facial expressions and assuming we will obviously see Shelby Walters over the next little bit and she's fiery and in your face. Oh, filth! They defied the <laughs> odds of the percentages. It'll be the five, six, seven hitters, starting with Sydney Kuma facing Catherine Sandercock, who threw 16 pitches, 10 for strikes in the first inning. Yeah, efficient. That's really what it's going to take for pitchers to be successful. I mean, we all know this, but the importance of being able to get ahead allows for you to kind of spread that zone a little bit throughout the game, try to make those hitters chase. Sydney Kuma with a hit in 15 of their last 16 games, hitting 383 during that time. She's their leading hitter when it comes to average. When you look at the weekend that Georgia was able to have, I mean, one of three teams that were able to score 30 plus runs, they just trailed Oklahoma, who had 38 last weekend, 32 runs. I mean, so that's what it's all about. And not to mention, something we talked to Coach Tony Baldwin about, I think that there was something, you know, kind of good about dropping out of that SEC tournament maybe a little bit earlier. Kuma. Gone! The home run ball travels! Sydney Kuma! tournament in regionals yes let's go wow pitch that's left up in the zone no doubt but kuma the strength in the pop to go oppo taco all day this was a game of inches for a second you're like man is it gonna go fair or foul and just the excitement rounding the bases looking at her teammates that's the first home run allowed and now the last six games for Florida State. And then you come to Sydney Chambly. See, the <laughs> last five games, Georgia coming in with 11 home runs. Florida State had not allowed one. Sydney Chambly had an out-of-body experience last yes. week. I mean, she has homered in the last four games. She had... 13 RBI in regionals. More so to me, the excitement of seeing her around those bases, <laughs> like, wow, I totally just did that. To be a grounder up the middle. Chambly keeps it going. Five game hit streak now for Sid Chambly. I mean, this is a 2-0 count, but this ball, I mean, maybe can be a little bit more on the corner, but has such good bite down in the zone. She just takes it right back up the middle. Not a terrible pitch by Kat Sandercock at a 2-0 count. I mean, they're just finding a way to adjust to that drop ball, drop and barrel. Jane Goodwin, Florida State looking for two. Not in time to first, but they will get Chambly going to second. But when we talked with, with Coach Tony Baldwin and some of the women on the team earlier, it, it was mainly about like how it was a blessing in disguise to get knocked out of that SEC tournament when they did. Because this is a team at times with constant midweek games and not as much time to maybe fine tune the engine because they don't get as much practice time. So he said we were able to get two to three solid practices under our belt to just work on the little things. And the individual work, too. Yeah. Hey, I'm struggling with this. Yes. Let me get some time to get out there and work on that and rep it out. 
And nowadays the game has changed so much where it's like you're constantly wanting to play games, you want to up your schedule, you want the RPI, like everything. And so when you play an SEC weekend, you get Monday off, you're prepping for your midweek Wednesday game, and then you're leaving to go the following weekend, you don't get as much time. This is Jaden Fields. Shallow right. In comes Hallie Raycaser. I guarantee you, though, Courtney, like, this is a Florida State team that came in knowing that Georgia's going to score. You cannot deny the fact that this team does not know how to score runs. So I think, I don't know if that puts more pressure on their offense to feel like they have to score runs, but to me, that's what it's going to come down to. Is Florida State, are you going to be able to step up, put some big runs up on the board to support your pitcher? Kat Sandercott's going to help herself, fielding that and getting out number three. But hey. The adversity in moments like this or when you fall behind, it's the mindset of what did we do last weekend? How can we use that adversity that we faced as a team and dealing with those emotions and bring that in and just try to have really good at bats? Because you can feel at times when someone scores or that little bit of extra pressure that you may put on yourself like, oh, I need to, I need to, when it's like, all right, hey, I just, I need to execute my game plan. What is my plan going up against Madison Kerpix? I need to execute that as a hitter. It'll be four, five, and six for Florida State. Madison Kerpix struck out the last two batters she faced. Michaela Edenfield at the plate now. And she's moved up in the lineup yeah. since last weekend. I like that. I... I think that she just brings this confidence and swagger when she steps in the box and a little bit of that intimidation factor for sure for pitchers. Swings a big bat. Who else can step in the box and have an alien <laughs> on their face? <laughs> She's got a little one drawn on there today. I love that. That's like one of my... Look at that. I mean... Well, keep in mind, area 51 is where yeah. she hits home runs, so it's dropping softballs. Yeah, le left field area, nicknamed Area 51. Obviously, she's number 51. Likes to hit it over there. I wonder if she's got a picture with that alien over there by the Starbucks <laughs> painted on the, <laughs> the graffiti. <laughs> this looks similar. There was an alien graffiti on the drive through of the Starbucks last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to get a selfie with that. <laughs> One of us did. <laughs> it wasn't you. It was not me. <laughs> so Enfield drawing her team leading 45th walk of the season brings us to Devin Flaherty and we highlighted her at the start of the game because she comes in on a season high six game hit streak and just having confident ABs right now. She's so important for them Courtney her confidence but to me it's just been the leader that I think she's been able to turn into like she had some hard conversations with Lonnie Alameda last yeah. season of things that she needed to do and ways that she needed to be better and I think at times you can have those conversations and maybe be offended and not look at the the message and she found a way to just completely make a 360 and she's been a way better teammate way better across the board so we see Chelsea Wilkinson the pitching coach for Georgia coming out to talk to Madison Kerpix and Lindy Ray Davis quick little meeting there you know, and it's like the unwritten rule with pitchers. When your team puts a run up on the board, the last thing you want to do is walk the lead off. So I think to be able to go out and just have that quick little exchange. I mean, this is someone that Madison Kerpix admires. It is someone that she grew up watching play. And I think when you get that connection with someone, for her to be able to go out and instill a little bit of confidence into the pitcher, it just gives you a different perspective. One out of Flaherty. Liked it a lot. Enfield pushing for third. Runners on the corners. Make it a seven game hit streak now for Devin.
She takes this pitch. It's elevated. It's up, but it's over the heart of the plate. She takes it right to left center. Good night. Cuts it off. Edenfield uses her speed to get to three. And we got a first and third situation here with none down for Florida State. We're seeing that different mentality this year. Ready for anything from Florida State. Trying to answer back. Now Mac Leonard at the plate. Leonard skies it. Dallas, good night underneath it. Enfield's going to tag and go. No. Nice throw by Dallas Goodnight to get that back to Lindy Ray Davis and keep Edenfield at third. I like that hold. I don't think that was deep enough. And Goodnight has a pretty solid arm from center. I, I, I think she would have been out at home. Flaherty at first, Edenfield at third for Hallie Waycaser. First pitch strike. And Waycaser to me is a hitter that has an opportunity every single at bat to start to get hot, start to get going. I mean, her last eight games, two for 20, just batting 100. Sometimes it just takes one big swing in a situation to just turn it around. And what makes Madison Kerpix a tough pitcher at times is obviously she can change speeds, but she'll sneak it upstairs with that little rise ball, but you're not getting as many swings and misses here with Florida State or swings on that pitch up in the zone. They're seeing it down. Runner going, Flaherty in the scoring position. So if you're not getting the swings and misses on that pitch, are you changing anything? You are. You're going right like you see Madison Kerpix throw the change up at a 1-1 count. Like there's confidence behind that pitch to be able to throw it there. And I would not be surprised if she potentially throws it again at a 1-2 count, maybe down shins or lower. And that's what it's, it's going to take for both of these offenses, Courtney. It's going to take being able to find ways as a hitter to eliminate a pitcher's best pitch. So for Sandra Cock, it's that drop ball. How can we make her bring that up? And for Madison Kerpix, how can we, you know, continue to not chase that pitch up in the zone and hunt something in our wheelhouse? Quick snag over there. sit and change. Hopper to Mosley going home. Edenfield in trouble. Tag was applied. Signaling out at home by our home plate umpire that Lindy Ray Davis was able to apply the tag to Edenfield. You see the rundown. It looks like she just gets her on the shoulder. Sarah Mosley with just the heads up play, just the money throw to Davis. They get her in a little bit of a pickle, but you can definitely see that tag there. And the one thing that I dig about this play, even though Lindy Ray Davis knows she gets the tag on Michaela Edenfield, she thinks next play, just in case. Yeah. And it's heads up. Always want to be thinking, hey, okay, boom, what's that next play? And perfectly executed defense there by Georgia. And now a pressure A-B here for Keene. And actually, this is going to be Katie Dack who subs in for Keene, who was originally in the eighth spot, the first baseman. Sarah Mosley leaning over for it. 
Crisis averted for Georgia, and they still lead by a run. It's pretty special, man. This game is just continuing to get so much bigger. You can't deny it. People want to put it on telly. Dallas Goodnight gets jammed on the first pitch to Flaherty. We can talk about people getting involved in softball. Uh, one of those would be Kirby Smart, the Georgia head football coach. He made sure to stop by practice before George, Georgia headed over to Tallahassee. An interesting little story. Lindy Ray Davis is coming up to the plate, and he actually helped recruit her on her recruiting visit. She came in his office and sat down. They had a conversation. She's from a football family, her dad played baseball but her uncle was Bobby Lamb who was the former head coach at Furman and Mercer her dad a high school football coach so they've followed Kirby Smart and how cool is that to, get to talk to him on the recruiting visit I'm, it worked out it did <laughs> I, I'd love a little pump up from Kirby Smart or maybe if Michael Jordan is tuning in and would love to just <laughs> I'm down with it <laughs> Just foul, hops over the line before passing that first base bag. Kind of see this second time through the lineup here for Georgia. Adjustments that they're going to try to make here against Kat Sandercock. I think they're doing a really good job so far, definitely of like laying off that drop ball, not swinging at pitches that are way down in the zone. But Kat still being able to jump ahead of these hitters. Goes to show how good her stuff is. O2 to Lindy Ray Davis. I mean, we sat down and talked with Coach Lonnie Alameda just about the kind of this plan of attack in a short week. I mean, they definitely do their fair share of prep, but. I mean, they had a little soiree up on the hitting deck and got like a, uh, what, what's the word? A, a snow, snow cone. Yeah, snowball snow thing. Yeah. Canada, I think we say snow, snow cone. I think both are used here. Okay. And they did a little coloring session. I appreciated your use of soiree. Yeah. A little okay. shindig. Up it's top. good, you know, right? Like, clear the emotions out, totally. celebrate what you did, and then let's go back to work. Well, and Lonnie said, and like, not everyone's into it, but that doesn't mean we're not going to do it. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so we're still going to like do these things and you may like it or you may not. But I think at times it takes a little bit of pressure off, takes the edge off. You're hanging out together, having a snow cone. have been fantastic. We were lucky to be here for regionals. The Super Regionals sold out in one minute. We were told within the first 10 minutes of the gate opening, over 430 people came in. Two-two. See, and those were pitches at times that Kat Sandercock was getting South Carolina to swing at in that perfect game. Just kind of pinching the edges doing a really good job of throwing that drop ball but spreading the zone a little bit especially at those 0 2 1 2 counts it gets through for lindy ray davis rolling out to right This is a pitch on the inner half. You see Lindy Ray Davis a tad off the plate. She's able to turn on this pitch. Mac Leonard back, lays all out for it, but a lot of heat behind this. Love the smile. <laughs> now you bring up Jada Kearney, who's the home run leader, and Kat Sandercock struck her out the first time up.
Jada Kearney, she played so many different sports, soccer, gymnastics, she did horseback riding, basketball, but eventually picked softball. And she always wanted to play at Georgia, committed in the eighth grade and never wavered from that commitment. Well, and to the little athletes that are listening, are you hearing how multiple sport athletes can be successful still? You don't have to toss it all into one sport. You can do a whole bunch of things. And I think that makes you such a better softball player when you are coached in basketball or horseback riding or track and field. And I mean, if coaches are telling you at 12 or 13 that you need to stop playing other sports to just play softball, maybe you're not playing for the right coach. I think at times I also think they don't know how hard it is at the collegiate level, right? Yeah. So if you're doing that from eight years old all the way to college, it's like, man, sometimes it's take a little breather. I'm going to go to basketball. I can take a second and got to get off my horse. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yes or no for you? Horseback riding? Daniel Laurie? No. <laughs> I just wondered. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we had a big bug in here, Courtney. Was Last week it was a lizard. <laughs> this week it was the largest bug I've ever seen. <laughs> One, two to Kearney. When we talked about Georgia's offense, and look, it's no secret, Oklahoma's won the last two national championships. So everybody's, can you measure up to Oklahoma? Look how similar these numbers are from the regional round for Georgia and Oklahoma. Georgia can swing it. They've yeah. always been able to, able to swing it, excuse me, in my mind. I think the difference this year to me is that they have a true pitching staff. Second time, Sandercock has set down Kearney. And this is just a prime example of maybe overthinking, maybe not expecting that pitch. That's a drop on the inner half. It actually leaks a little bit over the white, but just doesn't take the bat off the shoulder in that moment. That's two strikeouts to one of the toughest hitters in this Georgia lineup. Now to Sarah Mosley. Muffley, yes. Georgia leaves a runner on, but the Bulldogs up 1-0. Leaving everything she has out on the field. That's what Lonnie Alameda told us. There you go, Josie. Why wait? Take the first pitch. So clutch in the nine spot. Courtney turns the lineup over so quick. Obviously, Kaylee Mudge up top, but one pitch, one swing, and she just turns on this pitch up in the zone on the outer half, pulls it right by Sarah Mosley. Just a hot shot. Well, Lonnie Alameda talked about how she's understanding her swing more as of late. There's a calmness about Josie right now when she steps in the box, and that work's paying off. Top of the order with Kaylee Mudge. And when you know that the game is ending soon for you wearing your university across your chest it's just different it hits different Lonnie said that about the seniors and the way they play they really appreciate the little things maybe more than ever and at times you don't realize how fast time goes you have four years to be great four years four postseasons potentially and when you look at last season with them dropping in the regionals and losing to Mississippi State, that hurts. You wear that heavy on your sleeve and that fuels your fire into those dark fall winter days and workouts. Much showing bunt. That's a ball and two strikes to Kaylee Mudge, who started this game with a hit but was stranded there as kerpik has got the next two batters, struck them both out.
Really good job by Kaylee Mudge to lay off that pitch. And like I'm saying, both these offenses are doing a really good job in eliminating the best pitches for these pitchers. Now it obviously opens up potentially that change up here for Madison Kerpix, but I like that hold by Mudge. And then you take a pitch away from a pitcher. Not that it adds this different type of pressure, but you definitely know in the back of your head, all right, dang, they're not swinging at my rise ball. So I, what do I need to do different? And definitely Madison Kerpix talks about that relationship with Coach Wilkinson, who's given her those tips, but they're seeing it down well here. Full count. How important is that relationship between the pitch caller and the pitcher, especially when there's a situation like this where they're they're laying off the rice ball? Game changer. That that relationship is the difference between good and great. When you are able to have someone, especially in the dugout, that you fully trust that's calling pitches, but more importantly, have that relationship where you got a feeling in your gut, hey, I don't want to throw this pitch here. This is what I want to go to. You have that open relationship to do that. That's where you're at your best. Months to right. Monthly gets the signal to come on home. Tie game. And the doubles specialist. This is a pitch that's left up. This is her 16th double of the season, not to mention a seven pitch AB. Sparked by Josie Muffley in the nine spot. Getting on base, Kiwi Mudge finding a way to score her. Nobody better in that moment. This team leads the nation in doubles and Mudge stepped up big. And they've now hit a, had a double in 22 of their last 23 games. They're one double away from a Florida State single season record now at 115. Janai Kerr, can she keep it going? And what's the one thing that I said to Lonnie Alameda today when we talked? I said, your team looks like a completely different team when you were able to score just that one run last weekend against South Carolina. They look like a completely different team now that they were able to just get one. And sometimes it takes that pressure off when you cross one home. Kerr way high up into the air. Dallas, good night there. No room for a mudge to advance. And we saw them in regionals. They make the adjustment the second time yes. through. You have to. The best offenses find a way to not only make adjustments at bat to at bat, but really make it tough, gritty ABs where you step in the box and it's like, all right, hey, I got beat on this pitch. Not going to happen again. Be a little more on time with the changeup. See the rise ball down. Kaylee Harding now. She was the last strikeout victim by Madison Kerpix, who has two Ks tonight. Got her on the change in the first. Florida State's figuring it out to the wall. And home comes Mudge. Single season record for doubles for Florida State. This is the off speed pitch. And Harding on time with this all day. I thought for sure this was going to leave the yard. And everything to me right now, Courtney Lyle, is sparked by the Josie Muffley nine hole AB. She gets on base, she's scrappy, she turns that line up over to Kaylee Mudge, who gets. Her 16th double of the season to tie this ball game up. And then Kaylee Harding steps up for another double, the 116th tier for Florida State. And a new single season record for Florida State. 
when you look at this lineup, why have they hit so many doubles? What is it? Is it the base running? Is it the, the speed? Yeah. They have speed. They're good at hitting gap to gap. They know they're parked well. And at times, truly trusting your instinct. You'll see a lot of these women that when they hit something in the outfield, their first mentality is double. Yeah. Like they're rounding first as if they're going to get to second base. So when you have that mentality, when you step in the box and you hit a hot shot out there and you're thinking too, good things can happen. Cuddle up here for Georgia. Well, the Women's College World Series returning to Oklahoma City. The action begins next Thursday, a week from today at 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2023 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Georgia took the lead on a solo home run in the second. Now Florida State with two RBI doubles in this inning to take their first lead. Head and field. Off the glove of Armistead. Harding hitting the gas. 3-1. Now is when they need that the most. She starts with Flaherty, who fouls off the first pitch. And we asked her today, like, how excited she is. And she said, dude, I'm so stoked to be back here. I played this team with Duke and didn't have a whole lot of success. So I think now that I get this second opportunity with Georgia, like, she was fired up about it. And there was a little part of me that thought maybe she was going to get the ball. I thought she was going to start. Uh, yeah. I said that to you. But here she is in a relief situation, and it's a big one. Shelby Walters injured most of last season, only made six appearances in 2022 for Duke, but did face Florida State twice in 2021. Did not get the win either time. Just out of the reach of Ellie Armistead. But we did ask Lonnie Alameda, Florida State's head coach, when you watch Shelby Walters now compared yeah. to two years ago, what are you seeing? And she told us she's throwing harder as the game goes on and also commanding the zone better than she did the last time they faced. And stronger. Yeah. And the one thing I think that stands out the most is how much she talks about her injury and that road to recovery and the grind time and the days spent not being able to take the field the way you normally can and want to. But the things she was able to learn while facing that adversity makes her that much better. And you're seeing her shine in a whole other light while playing with Georgia on the front of her. She's learned so much through it, and she has just been lights out. Devin Flaherty had a single in the second inning. Now facing Shelby Walters. You see her timeline before she made it her way to Athens. Going change. First no no in Duke history. No big deal. Oh, and that hits Devin Flaherty. She will take the base. So Belvi the pinch runner at second, Flaherty now at first with one down for Mac Leonard. Leonard's still finding her way in this tournament. She's one for 14 in the NCAA tournament this year. Hopper to Kuma looking for two. Going home. 
tack on another run for the Knolls. And I mean, she's sneaking a peek right out of the gate. She's getting sent by Coach Travis Wilson. And she's fired up. Let's not forget last inning. They had a play at the plate and it didn't work to Florida State's favor, but they continue to get some big runs up on the board here in the bottom of the third. Brings us to Hallie Waycaser. Four runs for Florida State in this inning. After this inning, we'll talk to Tony Baldwin on the other side of the commercial break. Georgia taking the lead in the second inning with a solo home run from Sidney Kuma. And then here in the bottom of the third, Florida State has figured it out. 4-1 lead. Towards Jada Kearney, got it. Second time through the order, Florida State figures. Georgia four to one, and we're talking to Georgia head coach Tony Baldwin. And coach, we talked to you this morning about the pregame message that's been every game for you guys about being ready for whatever the game throws at them. How have you seen these women handle that over this season, and especially coming into this game? Yeah, you know, I'm really proud of the way that they've grown their resilience, their ability to uh, answer back and just play the game until, the, until it ends. And, uh, you know, that's what that's the beauty of competition. And uh, so we've been really good at it, and we're going to have to be good at it again tonight. Coach, kind of biggest adjustments you want to see this second time through against Camp Kat Sandercock for sure. Yeah, I think, I think we've put uh, some good at-bats together. I think situationally we've missed some opportunities. Um, you know, and, and she's a really good pitcher. She doesn't give you many, so you got to capitalize on the ones that you get. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to keep competing. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And they're going to start this inning facing Catherine Sandercock with Sydney Kuma, who is responsible for the lone run on the board for Georgia. She had the solo home run in the second inning, Georgia's 92nd home run of the season. What have you noticed about Georgia's at bats against Sander Cock tonight? I think they've done a really good job at making her bring that ball up in the zone. You don't see them swinging at pitches really far out of the range of pitches that they can crush. But I will say this, you have not seen Sander Cock climb the ladder at all. Last pitch right there, 66. She's going upstairs with that rise ball. So potentially she switches her game plan here that full second time through the lineup where she said hey all right they're laying off that drop ball maybe now i can spread the zone i can go upstairs and that will get some more swings and misses on that drop coat through the left side cindy kuma has reached in both of her ab's And the one thing that really impresses me the most about Kat Sandercock is that red. So that red is where she's going to get the most swings and misses. So to me, that just shows how well she owns both sides of the corner, down and up on both in and out. And so cool to see that she's just able to nibble the corners. Chambly, laser, Sakine, excuse me, to Leonard. Yeah, just Mac Leonard heads up, ready to rock. Just a laser hit right at her, thinks next play right away. Nothing you can do as a base runner in that situation. 
Second double play of the tournament for this Florida State defense, their 14th of the season. I think that comes back and hits Jaden Goodwin in the box. And there's a difference for a pitcher thrown with a three-run cushion opposed to a one-run lead. But I will say this about Georgia. You can never count them out. As a pitcher, it's like, all right, hey, you guys, got, you got to give me more runs. You have to get me more runs because this team can swing it. And they play until that last out. They're so feisty. Yeah, in regionals, they had 30 total hits. 14 were for extra bases. 10 home runs. That's two rise balls this inning that I'm seeing Kat Sandercock throw. Have yet to see her throw a pitch kind of way up in the zone. So that to me indicates, all right, hey, this second time through, we're going to spread it. We're going to move upstairs a little bit. Now we're going to try to get in the hitter's head and say, hey, you're going to lay out my, my drop ball. You want me to bring that up. Now I'm going to throw that rise ball that makes you think as a hitter that it's a drop ball that's potentially elevated. That's why you're getting those swings and misses. And I mean, hats off to the pitch callers. I know the game has changed in the sense where pitchers, the battery, are not calling the pitches necessarily. You know how much work goes into it for Lonnie Alameda and the pitching coach, Chelsea Wilkinson. Like, there's so much homework that goes into that. But at the end of the day, you can't teach the bulldog mentality. You can't chart that. Like, that's something you have to have when you are out there. Rolling it down to Mac Leonard, and she by herself retiring the side at first. What were the hitters talking about, that adjustments? What did you like most about the third inning for your at-bats? Um, the runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, pitching coach doesn't like some runs, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, they're fighting. And they're a great ball club. They swing it. Um, two really good pitchers, so it's just adjustments. It's postseason time, you know, pitch by pitch. Coach, I, I have to ask, obviously coming off of an amazing performance by Kat Sandercock last Sunday in the perfect yeah. game, but getting the ball again tonight, kind of just thoughts on her performance so far? Um, awesome. I mean, I know these guys are really tough out, so we got to manage the pitch count a little bit and try to keep, you know, mixing up looks a little bit, but playing some great defense. I was, you know, crazy yeah. ball by Mac there. and. Um, it's just so fun. Like, as long as she can maintain her emotions, you know, that's a big part. Like, you get really caught up in this environment. It's so cool. But keeping your routine one pitch at a time, and uh, she's one of the best at that. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, you hear talk about this environment? It is incredible. I mean, the, the stadium is full. The parking lot, I the parking know. deck in left field is full. The party porch is popping. This is the this is the place to be. I mean, selling tickets out within a minute. Chairs lined up at 7 a.m. this morning for a 7 p.m. start. They love their knolls. Shelby Walters entered this game in the last inning for Georgia, and she will start with Katie Dack in the eighth spot, taken to Kuma. I just think it's when you hear coaches talk about the importance of like sticking to the routine and not letting the emotions of stuff get in the way, especially for the pitchers. Like I, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. There is a different pressure being a pitcher, right? Like defensively, yeah, you have to step up, but that ball is not always coming to you. You get the ball back to you every single time as a pitcher. And what allows for you to perform in pressure situations is falling back on that routine. Armistead, it hops out of the glove of Jaden Fields, and Josie Muffley reaches safely for the second time.
That'll be an error on Ellie Armistead. So the E6 allows Muffley to score. Mudge with the bunt. Moves that runner into scoring position. Walters gets defended that lead to the top of the fifth we go Jaden Fields starting first it's eight nine and one in the lineup Three up, three down for Georgia in the fourth, and it was Mac Leonard who was at first taking care of all of those. Bethany Keene is back playing first base for Florida State. Grass in center field for Jaden Fields. Fourth time tonight, the leadoff has reached for Georgia. The shortstop, Ellie Armistead. a chance to cover this Georgia team at the SEC tournament and Tony Baldwin was talking to us about Ellie saying she's really worked with JT on valuing her defense and her offense equally like hey if I go 0-3 for the game it's not ideal but I can still impact the game with my defense I, I mean JT D'Amico the defensive specialist the throw pulls Keen off the bag but they get Fields going to second. And this is one that you know Devin Flaherty wishes she could get back. The throw, she had time. Would have been a double play, but just doesn't get that throw on the money to Keen. You like the heads up play by Kat Sandercock, the confidence in her defense to be able to try to roll that double play. Armistead reaching on the fielder's choice to the top now to Dallas Goodnight. Bunt. Harding has to hustle in, in time. Armistead in scoring position. And I like this little bunt. I don't know if I've seen a harder cannon by someone then Harding at third. I mean, she throws an absolute laser across the diamond. And she came in as a catcher for Florida State. Big arm behind the plate, but really was like, look, whatever the team needs, I'm going to do. And so that's playing third base right now. Wasn't stoked about it at first. Right. And Coach Lonnie said that. But one thing you know about Lonnie Alameda, you got to do what's best for the team. And every athlete that comes in finds a way to kind of mold into what that is all about. And I think this is going to be an easy replay review. She was out by a full step. Yeah, we do have replay review. Each team has two challenges, all of the review being done in Pittsburgh. And the call will be upheld. I 
that's really what it comes down to, Courtney. It's just like being able to step up and make big plays happen, right? Like the leadoff, good night, lays down that little bunt, a lot of speed, puts that added pressure on, but Keely Harding just fields it, makes a good throw, and they get the out. And it's not allowing the speed to become a factor. It's just executing the play for what it is. Look, Georgia's got to take advantage of this situation here. Can't leave a runner in scoring position down three. And you heard Tony Baldwin say it. We're not going to get a ton of chances against Catherine Sandercock. we got to take advantage. And a team that hits 335 on the season with runners in scoring position. Not a bad average. Muffley. Taking her time, did not panic, and makes the play. <laughs> Kaylee Harding to lead off against Shelby Walters. Fair ball! Guess what, folks? Little double action for Florida State. Have you heard that before? Man, Kaylee Harding is swinging it well. This is back-to-back -back doubles for her. This is heat. Shelby Walters throws this pitch hard. She's a little late on it. But it finds a way to hit the perfect spot down the corner to get back-to-back -back doubles. Swinging a hot bat right now. Lindy Ray Davis out to the circle to gather up the infield for Georgia. The adjustment has been so big for Florida State. It was the second time through the order in the third inning when they played it all four of their runs. And now the doubles keep coming, leading the nation 117 now as they're adding on to that new single season record. That's the fifth straight first pitch swinging for the Seminoles. And I think that goes to show when you're swinging early, you know a pitcher's going to give you something. You know Walters wants to get ahead. When you see that as a pitcher, what do you do? Completely different game plan. Almost the pitch backwards mentality where it's like, All right, hey, I know you're going to swing early. Now I'm going to bring the change up out there. Now I'm going to spread the zone and throw a ball to a ball and a half off and see if you have the patience as a hitter to not chase something out of the zone when you're trying to zone in first pitch swinging. And this is a completely different offense to me than what we saw last weekend. I agree, we, yeah. we saw them come out Friday against Maris in the opening right. round. Three home runs, crush them, run rule. But then you just see the offensive production today and that carryover from Sunday and the momentum behind that perfect game with Sander Koch. And I know I, I say this a lot, but there's something about going through those grueling situations and being on the brink of elimination and being able to face that adversity and those emotions and get to the other side and more importantly respect the fact that you can do hard things we can go through that and look where we're at i think that's helped them a lot today three balls and a strike now to michaela edenfield who had an rbi single in the third Walked in the second. She's reached both times she's been to the plate against both pitchers tonight as Madison Kerpix was the one getting the start for Georgia. Inside ball four. Now a team leading 46 walks on the season for Edenfield. Now you have a situation here potentially where you can go any bag. You know that Flaherty has a ton of speed. Potentially touch your bag, try to get to. It would be tough to roll up a double play on Devin Flaherty, but as a pitcher, you saw this little bit of kind of a calmness from Walters there. Takes a high hop. Mosley gets there. They get one, but now it's two in scoring position. 
for Florida State. You love to see it from the senior, Devin Flaherty. You're not always seeing that piece of the game be what it was, where you were constantly laying down that sacrifice bunt and sacrificing yourself. It's a small piece of the game that at times means so much. You're sacrificing. You're saying, hey, I'm going to put you guys in scoring position and give Mac Leonard a chance. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third, had an RBI on that play. And this is a Florida State team that is right up there with Georgia with runners in scoring position leading into this game. It, they were hitting 331 in RISP. See the runners in scoring position numbers here. Georgia 0 for 4, Florida State 2 for 8 tonight. Definitely a tougher inner inning here, excuse me, for Shelby. Walters just spreading the zone a little bit and falling behind. Finds herself in a little bit of a pickle here against Leonard 3-0 with runners on second and third. Second walk issued in this inning by Shelby Walters. Loads them up now. Harding at third, at field at second. Leonard at first. And Hallie Waycaser will come to the plate. 375 risk for Waycaser. First time up with the bases loaded. to feel so good for Waycaser. This is the pitch on the outer half. Not a bad spot by Shelby Walters. Just finds a way to sneak by Kuma and Fields at first and second. And that is to feel good. I mean, you look at her numbers from last weekend in the regional. She was one for 10. Struggled a little bit, but a clutch AB to be able to come in with bases loaded. And she's been able to reach twice tonight. Reached on the fielder's choice. And a pitching change for Georgia. So the third different pitcher heading into the circle. We'll introduce you to Kylie Macy when we come back. Spread that zone a little bit, can go upstairs, has that screwball, but right now it's coming in damage control. Trying to get your team back in the dugout, excuse me, to Listen, I always say this, like, even though it's six to one from someone that's had experience pitching against Georgia where they've scored a boatload of runs off of me multiple times, not yeah. proud of that, but I can say it. It's a team you can never count out. Whether you have your ace in the circle or not. Well, Florida State has shown great adjustments in the box. They have two hits in this inning. They walk twice. So now it's runners on the corners. Leonard at third, Waycaser at first, and Bethany Keene at the plate. Upstairs for ball one. Hallie Waycaser with a two RBI single with the bases loaded, our last at bat. Our last batter up. Now Keene in the eighth spot. Yeah, this is the right call by the home plate umpire, Kaylee Young, she's gonna say that 
way Kaser leaned into that, and I'm going to sit up here and agree with it. Oh, you're right. I don't think that it even touched her. 2-2 Two -two now. You are seeing at times the hitter be a little more fearless with that Evo guard hanging over the plate because it doesn't hurt when it hits you. That's the beauty of the Evo shield. I wish they had it back in the day when I played. Would have been like the terminator of Evo shields. You needed an Evo shield but, from that bug that was up here. I know. All the animals and reptiles continue to gravitate towards you. I'm okay with it. Keen just foul. What's it like for Kylie Macy to enter this game right now? Pressure filled at its finest. But at the end of the day, I, I think it's executing what you need to and embracing that type of feeling, knowing you're coming in with runners on. And at the end of the day, it's like, all right, hey, I have to enjoy this adrenaline rush. I have to understand how to kind of calm the heart rate a little bit and appreciate this moment for what it is. But at the end of the day, it's all about execution for pitchers. They've been put in pressure situations before, but it's looking at the sign, trying to throw a great pitch. She will walk Keen to load them up. For the number nine hitter, Josie Muffley, who has reached via the single and an error. Muffley hitting 400 with the bases loaded. Leonard at third, Waycaser at second, Keen at first. Strike one comes in. Florida State clears the bases. They walk this game off. Run rule up eight innings, up, up eight runs after five. Pop up. No chance on a play. Josie Buckley has had great at bats she today. Does. She looks, she looks good. She looks calm. She looks present. Top of the hour, our second super regional game, Oregon, Oklahoma State. Hopper to Mosley throwing home. Avoids the other run scoring. Muffley reaches. Base is still loaded now for Kaylee Mudge. She has a single and an RBI double tonight. Screwball away, good pitch, good height. One one. Kaylee Mudge's numbers with the bases loaded, six sixty seven. That's a pretty good average, if you ask me. Center, one run across 
Yes, they're looking for two. The throw makes it. Obstruction is called at the plate. Count the run. Florida State, one run from walking it off in the fifth. And Georgia will ask for the review on this play. Solid throw from good night, but hurting. Is she blocking the base before she has the ball? Is there still a lane for the runner? She's moving in the direction that the ball is taking her. And as a catcher, this is why this rule at times is so hard. I. I'm all for the obstruction rule so the athlete doesn't get hurt. But I think the natural instinct of the game at times, like you need that to be able to play itself out. And the way that Lindy Ray Davis kind of got that to be able to turn. Yeah, she was maybe a little bit in, in the front of the plate, but the obstruction rule at times is taking control in the sense where runners are being sent because at times you're relying on getting that call because it hasn't been executed properly at times by that catcher because it's hard to try to not block that play to be on time with the throw to track the runner home she did everything she possibly could in that situation to try to execute that play and we'll see what that decision will do here it's again the, the call on the field is that there was obstruction yep. she was safe runner safe at home so we'll see what pittsburgh has to say about this Call is upheld. It's eight to one Florida State. Winning run at third. Kaylee Mudge with the two RBI single. And now Janai Kerr will be the ninth hitter to step up here in the fifth inning. First pitch strike from Kylie Macy. And one run walks this game off. Macy gets her to swing, now 0-2. And, and I'm going right back downstairs. You have a wall behind the plate, Lindy Ray Davis. She can block it well. She blocked that last one. I'm not giving her anything that she can do damage with, especially on that swing that she just had with the change. Ball there in the box. We've seen her battle. 13 pitch at bat, seven minute AB. <laughs> I know I'm you love bring that. it up. I love it. It was one of my favorites. <laughs> oh man. That was against UCF in the regional round on Saturday. Scooped up by Dallas. Good night in center. We play on. Georgia's got to get some. Up, leads the nation in home runs. She's probably not happy about the fact she wasn't one of the top three finalists for National Player of the Year. I'm also not happy about that, if you were wondering. I know you were trying to kind of poke the bear. You poked I was. me. I love poking my pitcher. I, you can't deny. Kiki Malloy and she may be a little hot going into the super knowing that she wasn't a top three finalist listen it's tough to choose but someone that has that power and that speed and has helped this Lady Vol team do what they've done dang I want to let you know to Oregon Oklahoma State 
getting started any moment now. You can see that on the ESPN app. We'll get you there as soon as we're done here in Tallahassee. The time is now here for Georgia. On a hitting up murderer's row here. You look at Jada Kearney, Sarah Mosey, Sydney Kuma, Sydney Chambly, 60 home runs between the four of them. Fair ball. Bethany Keene making the play. And I think something to talk about is Kat Sandercock keeping one of the hottest offenses at bay today across the board. Yeah, she's given up hits. Yeah, she's given up a run. And it's a little bit more comfortable to pitch with the lead, no doubt. But to me, it's still all about the pitch location. And more importantly, you look at her pitch count. I mean, that's the 60th pitch, but she's very efficient. She does such a good job of really nibbling those corners. And I think she's kept them off balance a lot. And that goes to show like how elite her stuff is and the experiences this young lady has going up against this type of offense. It's impressive. It's hard to do. <laughs> Georgia has left four on base today. Sandercock working her way through five and a third inning. She has given up six hits, but just that one earned run, which was the home run by Kuma, who's on deck. Strike two. And I think what she does such a good job of, obviously besides nibbling those corners, it's just the true trust in the D, right? Like she knows her defense is there. They're going to make plays. She's not someone that's going to strike out 15 hitters a game but she'll find a way to get a couple strikeouts but really is better when she can trust that defense feed them the balls back to sandercock through her glove flaherty doing work <laughs> playing a super regional giving dubois the ball change up specialists and seeing how she's able to go in and perform and you're giving her four outs to work with and this may potentially be hey we want you to go out and get one out and then we're going to bring in mckenna reed to close out the seventh who knows but right now ali dubois has the ball works low in the zone and to me it is all about the change up and we sat and we talked with lonnie alameda tonight it's one thing she talked about she goes man i ali dubois she's going to get an appearance in this series simply because her change up is so good and we know in order to be successful against this Georgia offense, we have to be able to change speeds. And that's what Dubois does the best. We saw her get the start on Sunday, the first game they played against South Carolina. Three innings pitched in the regional, five hits, gave up two runs, struck out two. So you know the change is coming if you're Georgia with Dubois in the circle. <laughs> yes, it's coming. How do you approach that? It depends what your comfort level is as a hitter. Like some elite level hitters can go up there and say, hey, I'm able to hunt the change. I can't sit up here in the booth and say that I was an expert at being like, all right, hey, we're going to hit the change today. <laughs> I wanted to be on time with it and find a way, but I was trying to hit something hard. And that's what makes change of pitchers so dang good is that you look silly. Your body and your lower half is moving before your hands. And when you do that, you're completely shot when the lower is moving before the hands. So she just does such a good job with that piece. So as a hitter, you have to go in with a little bit of a simpler mentality. Am I going to hit the hard or am I going to hit the soft? And I got to try to be on time when I get two strikes. And she's going to start with the home run hitter today, Sydney Kuma. Blasted her home run in the second inning to put Georgia on the board and give them the lead, but then Florida State has taken over.
That just just got her. Yeah, nicks the Evo shield. And this is that changeup that we're talking about by Dubois. You see the release, you see the rotation. She ain't moving the Evo shield. Just saying, hey, got an open base. Ball comes in the box, you don't have to move. You do not have to move. Hit by pitch is a base hit in my books. Sydney Chambly now. There it is. And you see the lower half get triggered and start moving because you're completely fooled and the hands haven't caught up. Why Ali Dubois heard in the fifth inning. Look at Kaylee Harding's day. Two for three, two doubles, an RBI. That one's just going to be short into the glove of Jaden Goodwin. Crowd holding their breath on that last one. <laughs> Kylie Macy, the third arm that Georgia has used tonight. Madison Kerpik's got the start. Made it to the third inning before Shelby Walters relieved her. And Michaela Enfield has walked twice. RBI single in the third. Going inside for ball one. Yes, sir. Back to back 50 ribby seasons from Michaela Enfield. And not only that, I mean, this is someone that is dealing with a full staff and with that being said, she's working with seven different pitchers. And one thing that Coach Lani Alameda talks about so much with Michaela Edenfield, she does not take a bat at bat on the field defensively for those pitchers. She's so locked in in that relationship, being able to be the best version of herself for them. And sometimes it takes a couple years for those catchers to be able to decipher the difference between those emotions because you can ride a bat at bat and carry that in and that's something that she just does not do. It's impressive. Strike one. Three balls on a strike now to Michaela Edenfield. thinking change that whole time. I was going to say it to you so you knew that's where I was thinking. I saw I, your emotion. I, 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 saw I didn't it. have enough time. But I saw me, a little. I know. I did. I had a little flick with my hands. It was unspoken. <laughs> I'm going back to back. I'm keeping it down. I don't want to give her anything on the inner half. That didn't feel way high up into the air, but not deep enough. Good night grabs it. Two down. Now up to Devin Flaherty, has a single stolen base, a hit by a pitch, and she sacrificed herself to move the runners in the third, in the fifth. It's 
going to be short. Three up, three down, and the Georgia Bats have three outs to work with, down eight to one. She's three big. total hits in the tournament coming into this game, yeah. and now three in this game, so she's doubled that. Last chance for Georgia here. Goodwin leading off. It'll be 7-8-9. Goodwin Fields and Armistead facing Allie Dubois, who entered in the sixth inning. Back-to-back -back change piece. Like, really good change pieces, yeah. though. Like, Goodwin wants no part of those. You do it again? I do. I keep it down, and I go away. A little drop on the inner half. This is a feisty crowd. Yep. over to Keen. Two outs now for Georgia to work with. Jaden Fields, a single in the fifth. going to come and it's just straight filth. Yeah, it's she's a master at it. And like I said, it's hard as a hitter when you don't maybe have the mentality of I'm trying to attack the change and trying to be on time with it because you don't know what that pitch is going to feel like until you see one. She's trying. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I mean, the whiff and the spin on this. And you could see her lower half go first. Totally. Yeah. Good hold. Second strike out of the night for Dubois. We talked about the importance of this game, of game one of the Super Regionals. 73% of the host teams have advanced the Women's College World Series, but 81% of the teams that win game one eventually move on to Oklahoma City. There's going to be a pinch hitter for Georgia. It'll be Marissa Miller. She is 0 for 6. Her last hit coming on April 16th against Florida, but hitting 259 on the season. Different vibe of the crowd, huh? And again, Dubois ahead.
A ball and two strikes. 